Okay, so we've got uh, seven two day two. Uh, we're starting out at example five, and sometimes you may need to transpose a matrix. A transpose is a swapping of the row columns. Okay, and if you notice the change in notation here, okay, A I J becomes A J I. Okay, so instead of writing out my matrix and having it one way, I'll show you what the transpose is. And I want to show you how to do it in your calculator. So if you all would, okay, just take your calculator out and then redefine. I want you to redefine those matrices we did yesterday, A and B, with these A and B, so you recognize how to redefine a matrix. If I can get this up and running and see how it's going to work for me. Maybe I just, there we go. Okay, so I'm doing it on the TV as well, and uh, get this going. I've got a little cheat sheet so it's faster for me. So we're going to redefine our matrix, and we're going to go to our matrix, second button, and I'm going to redefine A, excuse me, so I'm going to edit A, and I want to make it a three by three. So I change it and everything from the old matrix is still there. Okay, that's three by three. Now I'm just going to change it over and my A matrix is going to have the uh, five, the six, excuse me, five, eight, seven, and then the six, six, seven, four, three, three. Okay. And now I'm just going to double check to make sure I didn't screw up because this is the beauty of using your calculator. All you have to do is double check the matrix entries that you do. Okay. So I'm going to second quit. I'm going to get back in there to matrix and define my other one as a three, uh, three by two. And I didn't do that right. Rush that. So I'm going to define my second matrix as a three by two and enter those in. Bless you. And 1.35 and point zero, excuse me, point nine five. One. One point three and one point three five. We got a lot of setup going on here, and I want to be able to talk about what, what we're doing. So a florist makes three different cut flower arrangements for Mother's Day, one, two, and three, each involving roses, carnations, and lilies. Okay. Matrix A shows the number of each type of flower used in each arrangement. Okay. So I've got for arrangement one, um, I've got five roses. And arrangement two has eight roses. And arrangement three has seven roses. And so on. That's how you read that. Then over here, roses for my wholesale supplier, number W1, if I'm talking about it, and I'm going to have this over here, is $1.50. And for my other wholesale suppliers, it's buck 34, 35, and so on. And these are my costs. These are the type of um, stuff I'm doing. So I'm entering them in the matrix A and B. And that's what we just did. Now, in the problem, the florist can buy his flowers from the two wholesalers, but wants to give the business to one or the other. The cost of the three flower types are there. Thank you, sir. And as we're going through, um, construct a matrix showing the cost of making each of the three flower arrangements from flowers supplied by the two different wholesalers. Well, remember our multiplication is kind of row column multiplication. So if I'm going to talk about the cost of my roses from uh, and the amount that it's going to take for me to make arrangement one. I would take my rows times five, five times 150, and six times 95, and four times $1.30. So in order to do that properly in my calculator, I'm going to transpose my matrix. And what that is, is I take my column, and I, my first column, I write it as my first row. So 564, 564, whoa, that was cool. And 863, 863, and 773, 773. You won't change this in your matrix. I'm going to show you the notation you will use to do this in your calculator. So your notation in your calculator is going to be found, and you're going to do A, T. That's transpose. So how you do that? 
is uh, we're doing this on a calculator display in the classroom. So if you've got questions about the calculator stuff, please uh, come on and then ask, or you can check your book. But what it is, I'm going to go and I'm transposing matrix A. So I go ahead and find matrix A, and I find it there. And I got it up just like we normally do. But remember, I'm going to take the columns and put them as rows. Okay, first column is going to be my first row. So this is how I do it. I go back to the matrix. I go to math. You see that little sub T or superscript T, I should say? I hit that, and now this knows that it's going to transpose matrix A. And I'm going to multiply it by my matrix B. So I put it in, and now I can hit my answer, and that will be my final answer for this problem. Consequently, I've got this stuff going on, and that's where I'm going. But I have to be aware of what types of things I have to manipulate to work with it. The purpose of this problem is to see a transposition of a matrix, to take the columns and put them to rows, and to see why I would do that. Okay? You might already have a matrix set up in your calculator, and you don't want to go through the time to make the change. Using the transpose function is a really nice, quick way to do it. Okay, because, and how do you discern whether you're going to do it one way or another? Is just check the problem as you go. How would you normally take single solitary entries and allow yourself to find the answer they're telling you to find? Okay, and once we did the matrix setup, it's a quick problem. I was able to check it out, but now, this problem does not touch on a major issue. It's not about the cheapest, but there's a balance between the cost and the quality that you get. Okay, so anytime you work with something, although cost is something important, there's a quality feature that you may have to consider too, especially if you're the owner of the store. Because although you might make some great uh, arrangements, uh, if, it's really, if it's more like stems and thorns and leaves versus flowers, you might have to consider uh, who your wholesaler is. Okay? But as far as a crunching number thing, notice how quick that was. I didn't have to do a lot. I just entered well, maybe 30 seconds from my matrices, and then boom, it was done. Okay? And I think I got that in there. This is a transpose AT of B, and that's where we're going. Okay? Any questions about the transposition and how I set it up? Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about identi identity matrices and inverse matrices. Okay. The n times n matrix, and remember that's a square matrix. Okay. n by n or m by m. Um, and that's a subscript. This subscript represents the fact that it's square. And it tells you how many row columns you have when you have that subscript. Okay, with ones on the main diagonal, we're talking about these ones, all the other entries are zeros on an identity matrix. Okay, so there will be ones on the main diagonal, upper left to lower right, and zeros everywhere else is the identity matrix of order n by n. They're always square matrices. Okay, I won't work on uh, identity matrix that's a 2 by 3 or a 3 by 2. It's always square. Okay, so I have I, a 2 by 2. The identity for a 2 by 2 is I sub 2. Identity for a 3 by 3, I sub 3. A 4 by 4, I sub 4, all, one's all the way down the diagonal. Okay? And that's straight up. Now, the really cool thing about the identity matrix as you're going through is it doesn't matter the order of multiplication. Okay? Excuse me. If I have a matrix A, where entries are A, I, J, remember, row, column, and it's a square matrix, must be a square matrix. I want to emphasize that. We can prove A times the identity matrix, or the identity matrix times A. You know how I talked yesterday that order matters when we're multiplying? It doesn't when we're talking about identity matrices or talking about inverse matrices to become the identity matrix. Okay? Those are the only times that the multiplication is commutative. Okay? So that is it. I sub n must be a square matrix as well, okay? Because I cannot, again, multiply a square matrix times a non-square matrix and expect to come out with something, okay? It is the multiplicative of identity of the set m by n matrices. So that's kind of a nice deal. So <clears throat> we're going to use this idea coming up here. <clears throat> if a is a non-zero real number, okay? And as we're going through here, if a is a non-zero real number, a inverse 
is equal to 1 over a, right? Now, is the multiplicative inverse of a? That is, a times a inverse is just 1. Okay, that's the defini definition of multiplicative, in multiplicative inverse of a square matrix, and it's similar. But here's what we've got. I can't talk today at all. I've been stripping over stuff all day. Um, we got the, let A be, member. we have the uh, entries A, row, column, IJ, be a square matrix, all right? If there is a matrix B such that when I multiply A and B together, and B and A, and that's the order issue, I get the identity matrix. They're called inverse matrices, okay? And if you have a true inverse matrix, you can actually check that they're inverses by multiplying and finding the result to be the identity matrix, but you have to consider both, both directions of multiplication when you do it. And that's what we're doing in example six. I'm gonna have you load these in your calculator. Again, I've got them A and B. I want you to redefine the two matrices we just did because I want you to be good at functioning your calculator. But also keep in mind, I'm doing this for calculator function. Any time we're on a test, you're going to see two by twos. You'll, you'll be doing them calculator free. and It'll be a separate part of the test. So load them up, and your A is a 2 by 2, and your B is a 2 by 2, and then do the order, okay? Get them multiplied in there. And I want you to practice this on your calculator. It's not about me showing you what I did or what the result is. Because for, for this verification, it should be pretty straightforward. It should be ones on the diagonal with zeros everywhere else, okay? If it's a, a true identity. It should look, as we go through, like this, because 3 minus 2 is just 1, 6 minus 6 is 0, negative 1 times 1 and 1 is 0, and negative 2 and 3 is 1. So that actually is my matrix multiplication, and I'm checking the identity as I do that. And again, without the calculator in this second one, 1, time, one and 2, that's 3, and negative 2, that's going to give me a 1 on that front corner. Negative 2 and 2, that'll give me a 0 on that one. 1 here and 3, that's 3. That's negative 3, it'll give me a 0 down here. 1 and negative 2 is negative 2. 3 and 1 is 3. They're sum together, and that's the identity as well. So we just did matrix multiplication by hand, and we also are able to do it in the calculator. You will do 2 by 2s without a calculator on the test. There is a non-calculator version of the part of the test, and there will be a calculator version part of the test as well. Okay. Now, that's just verification, showing that the order is commutative for the inverse matrix and the other matrix to find the identity matrix. Now, determinant of the square matrix. Okay, there's a simple test that determines if a 2 by 2 matrix has an inverse. Okay. If AD minus BC, pay attention that AD minus BC is non-zero, okay? Then we have an inverse, and the inverse is found by making this a scalar value to find the inverse of a two by two, and you'll be expected to do this calculator free. There is a selection on your calculator. If you have your matrix set into the calculator, if you want the inverse of the matrix, you just do that. Raise it to the negative one power, whatever your matrix is, and your calculator will find it, no matter what size. And I'm going to tell you, being able to do it on a 2 by 2 is easy. A 3 by 3, a 4 by 4 is a pain in the derriere. You want to have a calculator to do the inverse. Okay? So make sure you recognize as you go through, there is a function for it on the calculator so you can check your work. Don't do your work on the 2 by 2 stuff because you'll be expected to be able to do it on a test without one, okay? But when you're going through the determinant, it's this minus this underneath. And notice the change. I swapped. So my original was A, C, B, D. I swap 
the A and D positions, and I take the opposite of the C and B positions. And I use that as a scalar, that fraction, to help me find my inverse, okay? It's the same pattern all the time, okay? And it's something that you'll need to memorize. I won't give you the formula for it, okay? Now, the numbers AD minus BC is the determinant of two by two matrix, okay? Now, if it has an inverse, okay, it won't be a zero result. If it does have a zero result, they'll consider and this difference. If this is zero right here, if this value is zero, it'll be considered a singular matrix, no inverse, okay? Because remember, if it's zero, what's one divided by zero? It doesn't work, right? If it's something other than zero, it'll be considered a non-singular, and I got those highlighted here. Okay, if the determinant of matrix A is zero, then the matrix does not have an inverse and is singular. If a matrix has an inverse, it is non-singular, okay? So you'll discuss non-singular versus singular matrices. A singular, no determinant, okay? Or is the determinant is zero, no inverse. Now, as we slide on, I want you to try it, okay? Show a matrix has no inverse, okay? I don't have to have you find the inverse. I just need you to find the determinant, okay? So, remember, cross multiplication, think about it as cross multiply or cr taking the diagonal, multiplying them and finding the difference of the other diagonal, multiplying them, okay? So do that on matrix A by hand. Questions? Okay, as you step through, you'll notice that this is six and six. So it's gonna become six minus six, which is zero. Well, according to what we just read, Determinant A is zero and the matrix is singular, there is no inverse. Now, if you look in your textbook, they do it a different way. There's absolutely no way I'd do it the way they did it. I would do it this way every time. This is way faster, it's easier, and there's a you know, speed part that is appreciated with this. But remember, you're finding the determinant to help you determine if it's got inverse or not. I'm not asking you to find the inverse. I'm asking you to consider, does it have an inverse, okay? And to practice this, I've got three. For each matrix state, if an inverse exists, you're going to do exactly what we just did. Matter of fact, I'll keep that up. You're gonna find the determinant. And part of this determinant is you being able to work with notation. So when we're looking at it, if I ask you to find a determinant of a matrix, okay, I have you, do you see the bars? See how it changed? I don't have determinant written there with the brackets the way it is. It just it almost looks like it's uh, absolute value signs around the matrix. That is communicating you're finding the determinant of the matrix without writing the determinant, okay? And remember, that's negative two minus negative six, which is negative two plus six, and it gives us a four when we're done, okay? Because it's not zero, I say it's non-singular, matrix has an inverse, or there is an inverse of that matrix, okay? And that's all you're doing. You're finding the determinant to determine whether it's got an inverse or not. If it's zero, the determinant's zero, it can't be, an in, there's no inverse, it's singular. If the determinant is different than zero, then it's non-singular. Go ahead, make the check. B, C, and D. Make sure you know about notation. It's not just about the numbers, it's about what you're doing, okay? It's about what you're doing. Part of this isn't that it's four, okay? It's because you're finding the determinant and you're showing that, hey, I've got the determinant, the determinant's something different than zero, so I know it's got that going on. So in this next one, I've got this happening here. I'm looking for the determinant of the matrix. This is two ways to show that I'm doing the determinant. Okay, notation-wise. And then 
I've got the singular matrix. There's no inverse because this comes out to be zero. Okay. Be it known, your notation, your answer communicates that information that you found the determinant is zero, and then your final conclusion that there's no inverse. Okay, it's not just about taking the numbers and finding their difference. These are both zero right off the bat, so it's quick, easy, singular matrix, no inverse, okay, because it comes out to be zero. And again, here, four times six, negative nine and five, okay, so I got my 24 and 45 as I'm going through. And it's no, it's a non-singular matrix. Keep in mind what those mean, because people will ask me on the test, hey, what's a non-singular matrix? <laughs> You're supposed to know. Well, I'm not going to tell you. We've already just gone through them. So you have to know that vocabulary. You have to know the, determin the terminology as we go through this. Okay. So be careful about it. And as you do answer questions, I expect it the same. That's what I'm looking for. Presentation. Presentation is a big deal. Matter of fact, on the AP, I was talking about presentation with uh, LaRue. And she goes, yeah, if someone did that, they wouldn't even get the point for having the right answer. It would be a zero for all eight questions. You're being kind. I was like, I know. I'm aware. I'm just, I'm just getting them worked in. <laughs> they'll, they'll be in line next year with you. Okay? You got to keep in mind, presentation is a big, monstrous deal. So you got to make sure you know how to do it. Because if you don't, you can't just fake it. It'll just be wrong. Okay? Um, find the determinant of a 3 by 3 with your calculator. Okay? So all you're going to do, enter the matrix in as matrix B, C, or D. I don't care which one you do. I want you to practice it. Take your calculator, put it in there. Find the determinant. Or not the determinant. Yeah, find the determinant. Okay? So first, get the matrix in there. So after you hit your determinant in your calculator, you're able to come out with negative 24. Our next section is just being able to work the determinant as we're going through. So what we're going to take is if I have my original matrix, it's a two by two, okay? And I just went back and checked out what we did in determinant. And we need to recognize the connection of the inverse. Now, if I was just going to do and find the inverse matrix and I was able to use the calculator, I would take my, calcu my matrix in my calculator and I'd raise it to the inverse. And all it is is me hitting me, my matrix and then doing the inverse with negative one with my calculator and then hit and enter. Okay? So you can check your work on a two by two as you're doing your assignments, but no, you won't have that possibility when you're taking the test because on a two by two, you'll be doing that on a separate test, no calculator. Okay? Now, please keep in mind as we're doing this, this is the determinant and the change here. 3 and 2 switch positions, and 4 and 1, we take their opposites, okay, according to this. So your next thing is 6 minus 4, that's where the 1 half came from. I switch three, 3 and 2, take the opposites of those two positions, and now I use 1 half as a scalar, and 1 half times 2 is 1, 1 half times negative 1 is point, negative 1 half, one half of negative four is negative two, one half of three as I step through, okay? So those are the things I'm doing when I take and find the inverse by hand. I use the determinant and the manipulation of my matrix as I flip it around, okay? In a three by three, enter it into your calculator, go. I want you to see how it's done. So in this next one, you're going to find the inverse. But before you even start doing the inverse, um, find the determinant of B. Because if it doesn't have a determinant, if the determinant is zero, I should say, it won't have an inverse. Otherwise, your calculator will deliver an error message, I think it is. And I'm going to check that. but. When it delivers the error message, you think you might have, you know, like pushed the wrong button. If you were looking for a non-singular matrix and the determinant was actually zero, it's not going to give you an inverse. Okay, your calculator will return an uh, error message. At least I believe that's what it will be.
always double check your calculator before you hop off that because you don't get the chance to see it. There are a couple um, newer versions of the program that allow you to see the stuff that you're doing and change it on the fly outside of this. Now when we're doing this, I'm going to hop out. I've got my stuff in B. So I'm going to check the determinant first. Determinant of B. So I'm going to hop in B. And I get it that it's negative 10. So I know it's going to have an inverse because that determinant is something other than 0. So second um, matrix, B, will give me my inverse. And I'll just hit that. And it'll give me my answer. Okay. So that's what I should be getting off the calculator after I put it in. Actually, I think I put it there. Okay. And as we're working through, I'll keep my prep the board because I knew it was a lot of calculator work and I didn't want the calculator work to take extra time. Are you okay with using your calculator with determining the determinant? Recognizing that you get a determinant of zero, it's a singular matrix with no inverse. Okay. And when it's a non-singular matrix, that means that your determinant is something other than zero, you can get an inverse. Okay. This is the properties of matrices. This is the stuff we just went through. Um, talking about commutative property, identity property, uh, distributive property you can do with matrices, um, associative property, uh, inverse property, and multiplication over subtraction. Okay. Uh, last thing we're doing is just working with some points. I'm not sure about your recall and geometry. Okay. Do you remember reflecting things across the axis? Because here, reflecting with respect to the x-axis, and if I'm reflecting something with respect to x, here's the x, here's the y, if I'm reflecting it over, what changes? What sign changed? Because the x stayed the same, the y is different, right? So I want to keep in mind that uh, if you recall that, that's your rule. And that's the rule you used when you were a geometry student. What they're saying here is prove that the image of a point under reflection across the x-axis can be attained by multiplying by this matrix. Okay, so I'm going to take and set this up. I've got xy times my 1, 0, 0, negative 1 matrix. Well, when I do x times 1, I get x. y times 0, I get 0. So my first one is going to be that in the first part of my matrix. So that's x plus 0, y. Then I'm going to go x times 0, y times negative 1. So my second entry is that. But 0 times y and 0 times x are just 0, and I add those. My final answer should be x and minus 1. My, excuse me, x to the opposite of y. What I would expect to find. But that's how I use matrix multiplication to get there. Okay, That's how I'm defining it. Because they asked me to prove that that's the image, and I've just proved it. I knew that that was the image, but based on what they wanted me to do, I did it to their method. Questions? Okay. Now, as far as the calculator work is concerned, if you have questions, make sure you ask. Most of the time, the calculator work I'm doing isn't a major thing. Um, it's in your uh, catalogs and your for your calculator. I call them catalogs, your instruction booklet. They're about an inch thick if you actually look at them. Who's read theirs? Anybody actually pulled theirs out and actually read theirs? Just kind of go along and, oh, this is how you do it. Um, pretty in interesting, some of the stuff that's going on. But as we're uh, working our way through today, I think that was it. Uh, the assignments that we've got for 7-2 Day 1 and 7-2 Day 2 are up. They're, always, they're up on the board as well. They're on Schoology. Make sure you're getting your stuff done, okay, so you can be successful on things. That's it. That's all we got.